Hello, uh, and welcome to the last lesson in this topic. Uh, and this topic is all about heating and insulating buildings. Now, during this, uh, this very short lesson, we're gonna talk about the following things. We're gonna talk about how we heat our homes. Uh, we're gonna talk about heat escaping from the homes. We will be coming back to the term thermal conductivity, which is what we spoke about in the last lesson. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about how air is uh, a good insulator if you can trap it and stop it from moving around. And then we're going to talk about something called payback time right at the end. So um, let's, let's get cracking with this then. So um, generally, we want the inside of our buildings, and, and let's talk about our homes in this instance, we want the inside of our buildings to be warmer than, than it is outside. And the way that heat or thermal energy, as we call it, works is that thermal energy moves from a hot area to a colder area until all the heat is spread out. So if your house is warmer than the outside, the heat that's inside your house will try to get outside your house. And by insulating your house, you're trying to keep as much of that heat inside as possible. And so you won't have to spend quite so much money on heating your house. Uh, and there's different ways that we do heat our houses. In, uh, in the olden days, uh, houses were generally heated by solid fuel. People would burn wood or coal or something in the in the central hearth in their house. I live in a Victorian house and this was built with fireplaces all over the place. So there would be sort of real solid fuel fires going on in different parts of the house. Uh, nowadays, uh, houses tend to be uh, houses or homes, depending on where you live, they tend to have central heating. So in this house here, I now have a boiler that runs on gas and that gas will heat up water in some pipes and those pipes will travel all around the house with the hot water to radiators and uh, from a central point where it makes the heat, that heat is then spread around, around my house. So uh, depending on whether you live in a house, you live in a terraced house, you live in a flat, there's different um, things you need to think about in terms of insulation. Now, if you live in a flat, uh, your place is better insulated because um, not much of your home's walls are on the outside. You will share some inside walls with other flats to either side and also maybe above and, and below. So you haven't got too much heat escaping to, to the outside there. If you live in a terraced house like I do, uh, it's only the front and the back of the houses where the, the heat can escape from because the sides of the houses uh, are fixed onto other houses. So you share their heat as it were. Uh, and also in a, in a house, heat rises as you know, and that can go up and go through the roof. So um, let's have a look. So we've spoken about the different ways that we heat our homes. Um, we're gonna talk about different ways that heat can escape from your homes. Now, uh, what my mum used to say when I was little, if you left the front door open in the winter, she'd say, don't do that, you'll let the cold in, which is terrible science, and I've told her that, um, but it didn't go very well. But uh, don't you don't let the cold in, you let the heat out, and you've got to keep the heat in the house. So if anyone says don't let the cold in, you can point them out that that old physics teacher said, no, actually, that's not true, you are letting heat out. And there's different ways that heat can escape from your house, and it depends on something called thermal conductivity, how well the materials of your house will conduct the heat, will be able to move that heat from inside your house to outside your house. Now, if your home is built of bricks, bricks are quite good uh, insulators, not very good at thermal conductivity. And if you have, uh, like many modern homes, they will be built with a layer of bricks and then a gap and then another layer of bricks. So you've got a, a, an air gap, they call it a walled cavity between the two layers. So if the two layers of bricks, the inside and the outside layer aren't touching, they can't conduct the heat through from one side to the other. So uh, the thicker the bricks, the worse thermal conductivity or the better insulator it is and if you put a gap in between the two the, the heat can't really jump across that gap as easily. Uh, now one of the things on the outside of houses that is a good thermal conductor or a poor insulator is glass. So old buildings tended to have small windows because if you've got a large surface of glass you've got a lot of heat can move out through that way. Uh, many modern houses are built now with double glazing. So you have one layer of glass, then you have a gap, and then you have another layer of glass. So if the inside, if the outside layer is cold, the inside layer is not as cold, and you don't lose as much heat through there. You will lose some between the two panes of glass. If you've got, here's a pane of glass, here's another pane of glass. Let's say this is the hot stuff inside, and this is cold outside. Um, the heat will go through this glass. It can then be carried by little bits of air as it moves around and that can transfer it to the cold 
uh, pane on the outside and then it can go and you can lose some heat that way. Now if you're being really fancy about this you can actually spend more on double glazing and have all of the air pumped out between these two panes and have a vacuum in there. So if you've got no, no air at all then you can there's very little heat escapes through there but they're quite expensive. So we have got double glazing where you've got an air gap between there because air is a a poor conductor it doesn't conduct heat very well but what it does do is it convects so the particles themselves can move around they can't conduct because they're so far apart they can't touch each other to pass the heat on but they can churn around because hot air rises um, and then the cold air falls and so that whole heat gets mixed about so if you can stop the air from moving you can stop the heat from uh, from uh, moving as well uh, and that's how things like duvets work. If you've ever bought a brand new duvet, you get it home and it's in a bag and it's not very big at all. And you open it up and you leave it and it just puffs up because all a duvet is, is lots of fibers that trap tiny, tiny bits of air. And if you trap the air, the air can't move. Uh, so it can't uh, transfer that heat around all over the place. So let's keep back on track here. We're talking about um, thermal conductivity and how you lose, lose heat through a home. So you can't put a duvet between these two panes of glass because that wouldn't be any good. You won't be able to see out of them. But you uh, remember I mentioned earlier that you get two layers of bricks. You have a cavity between those. If you put something, not like a duvet, but uh, some kind of foam or something in there that can trap the air and stop that from moving, that stops more heat from escaping through your house from the inside to the outside. And they call that cavity wall insulation. A uh, similar kind of thing, if you, uh, if you live in a house, um, you will lose heat up through the, through the ceiling and through the roof. Uh, and so they have loft insulation between the floorboards, between the joists up in the loft. They will put, again, sort of a foamy kind of material in there, almost like a big thick duvet, and that stops the heat moving up through the loft. So there's different ways that heat can be lost from your house. You can be lost through the windows. You can have double glazing. You can stop some of that. If you pump all the air out, it's even better. Uh, you can have uh, insulation in the cavity of the walls, um, and you can also have insulation in the loft. Um, if you live in a house rather than a flat and you've got heat can go up through there. Then one other thing that you can use is, you may have seen this, if you put some aluminium foil behind your radiators. You've got a radiator in a house, the radiator is often on an outside wall, so you want that radiator to heat inside your house, but if it's heating the outside wall and then the heat is being lost through there, then you're losing some of your energy. But if you get some aluminium foil and slot it down behind the radiator and the wall, then the heat coming off the radiator reflects and bounce back into the house. So um, those are different ways that you can, uh, you can insulate your homes. Uh, I've spoken about trapping air. And then the other thing we've got to talk about is payback time. Now, if you want to insulate your loft, let's say that you haven't got very much insulation in your loft, you're losing a lot of the, uh, heat through the, through the ceiling and, and out into the air, uh, you can pay to have someone come and insulate your loft. And typically that could cost about 180 pounds, that's one, uh, one set of figures that I've seen. Uh, if you have 180 pounds and you will save 60 pounds a year on your heating bill. And what payback time is, is how long before you've saved the money that you spent on the work in the first place. So if you pay someone 180 pounds to insulate your loft and you save 60 pounds on your heating bills each year because of that, it's gonna take you three years until you've saved the money that you spent. So we would say it's got a payback time of three years. Now, something like double glazing costs thousands and thousands of pounds to have a double glazing put into a house. And you are, it, I think it's about 20 years before you, uh, you save the money that you spent on it. So uh, that you have to sort of think about that with payback time, but also it's good to have the double glazing because we don't want to use so many fuels heating the house with globe warming and things like that. So that's it. Um, we heat our homes through different ways and we try and stop the heat escaping through our homes in different ways and never, ever, ever say you're letting the cold in. Okay, I'll see you next time.